Hello everyone. In today's video, me and my postgraduate student Shashwat Pandya are going to practically demonstrate five best nervous system mobilization exercises that can be utilized to treat headache patients. Now in most of the rehabilitation protocols that we have seen, physiotherapist often addresses various important components to manage cervicogenic headache. Like for example, we see that in cervicogenic headache patients, they have the forward head posture, they also have the hyperactivity and stiffness in their upper cervical spine and there is an inactivity and inhibition of the deep neck flexor muscles. Also there is a stiff thoracic spine and they often have a hyper exaggerated kyphotic deformity. Now since these musculoskeletal dysfunctions also compromises the functioning of the nervous system. In this video, we are going to emphasize the importance of including the nervous system or neural mobilization exercises into the existing treatment protocols for such patients. Like for example, due to the increased upper cervical extension and stiffness in the suboccipital extensor muscles, there is increased compression over the neural elements of this region, especially the suboccipital nerves. And similarly, because of exaggerated thoracic kyphosis, there is increased tension in the neural contents of the thoracic spine. And with nervous system mobilization exercises, a physiotherapist can successfully restore the viscoelastic property as well as the sliding ability of the nervous system in such patients. So here are the five best nervous system mobilization exercises that a physiotherapist can prescribe and recommend to cervicogenic headache patients. So let's get started with the practical demonstration. The first group of exercises are known as the distal sliders. These exercises intend to improve the distal sliding ability of the nervous system. And the first exercise in this group is known as the bilateral SLR exercise. For this exercise, the therapist is going to hold the position of the lower limb similar to that of performing the bilateral SLR test. Now before starting to elevate both the legs, the therapist is going to instruct the patient to dorsiflex the ankles. And then while maintaining the anchor in dorsiflexion, the therapist is going to lift both the hips up with knees extended only up to the mid range because intention here is to slide the nervous system and not tension it. So the therapist is going to avoid the end range SLR movements. So the exercise is going to look something like this. Just relax. Now dorsiflex. Like this. So we are going to perform around 15 to 20 such movements. Now assuming that this patient has the left side dominant cervicogenic headache, the second exercise is going to be the unilateral SLR sliders. In this again, the intention is to improve the distal sliding mobility of the nervous system. So again here, we are going to dorsiflex the left side ankle and at the same time we are going to move the, in, the leg into the mid range of SLR movement. So the exercise is again going to look like this. So 15 to 20 such repetitions are going to be performed next. The third and final exercise in the distal slider group is going to be the ipsilateral median nerve slider exercise. For this, the therapist is going to instruct the patient to keep the shoulder in 90 degree of abduction and the fingers pointing and touching the shoulder. And from here, the patient is going to extend the wrist and finger and is then going to take the elbow into the mid range of extension and then going to return back. So again, the intention is not to put tension over the neural contents of the median nerve but just to slide the content distally from the cervical spine towards the upper limb. Now moving on to the next group of exercises which are known as the two-handed sliders. Here the intention of the therapist is to slide the nervous system in both directions that is caudally as well as in the cephalad direction. Now again considering that it is a left side predominant cervicogenic headache, the first exercise in this second group which is known as the two-handed slider is going to be an exercise in which the patient is going to perform the ipsilateral side SLR along with neck movements. So that for the performance of the exercise, the therapist 
cephalid hand is going to cradle the occiput whereas the therapist corded hand is gently going to cover the anterior part of the chin. Now both the hands of the therapist are going to be utilized to produce the upper cervical flexion as well as the lower cervical flexion movement. Now care should be taken that there should be no chin retraction movement taking place. So it is just the upper cervical and the lower cervical flexion movements that the therapist is emphasizing upon. Now while maintaining the head in such a manner the patient is going to perform the left side ankle dorsiflexion along with the mid range SLR movement and as the leg goes up the therapist is going to take the head back into the neutral position. So the exercise is going to look like this and again up and back and up and back and up and back that's it. Now for the second exercise to create the two-ended sliding of the neural content, the therapist is going to stand at the head end of the treatment table and this time we are going to slide the neural content distally and proximally in relation to the cervical spine and upper limb. So for performing this exercise again the therapist is going to safely hold the patient's head and now from here the patient is going to be asked again to perform the median nerve distal and proximal sliders. Now well, once the patient starts extending the elbow the therapist is going to take the head and neck into the ipsilateral side flexion and once the patient starts returning we are going to take the head and neck towards the contralateral side flexion. So the exercise is going to look like this start. So every time the intention is only to slide the nervous system and not tension it. So we are just going to go up to the mid range of elbow extension. Very nice. The third group of exercises are known as the one-ended tensioners and in this we are going to demonstrate two important exercises. For the first exercise the patient's head and neck is going to remain neutral and the therapist is going to instruct the patient to dorsiflex the ipsilateral side ankle. So again considering it is a left side predominant cervicogenic headache. So the left side ankle is going to be dorsiflexed and then the patient is going to take the leg into the end range of SLR taking the nervous system into tension, maintaining it for 2 seconds and returning back. And this again needs to be performed for around 10 to 15 repetitions. Holding for 2 seconds and relax. The second exercise in this group is the ipsilateral median nerve tensioner exercise. So again for this the therapist is going to perform the left side median nerve tensioners in the end range of movement. Taking the elbow, wrist and fingers into extension, maintaining it for 2 seconds, returning back and doing the same movement for 10 to 15 repetitions. The fourth group of exercises are known as the two-ended tensioners. Here the intention of the therapist is to add tension to the nervous system from both ends, that is from the cervical end as well as from the distal upper limb and the distal lower limb end. So the exercises are same as that of the one-ended tensioner except that before performing Performing these exercises, the therapist asks the patient to keep the head and neck into the contralateral lateral flexion. So to treat the left side cervicogenic headache, the patient's head and neck is going to remain in the right side lateral flexion. And from here, the therapist is going to instruct the patient to perform the ipsilateral SLR with ankle dorsiflexion up to the end range, holding for 2 seconds and returning back, performing it for 10 to 15 repetitions and then performing the ipsilateral median nerve tensioners, holding the end range for 2 seconds and again returning back. So here we are tensioning the nervous system at both ends. The last and final exercise to improve the nervous system mobility is known as the long sitting slump sliders. To perform this exercise, the patient is made to assume the long sitting position. Now while maintaining the long sitting position, the therapist instructs the patient to first perform the upper cervical flexion followed by the lower cervical flexion and the patient's contralateral upper limb holds this position in this manner. And now from here, the therapist instructs the patient to perform the contralateral side flexion of the cervical spine opening up the C1, C2 and C3 region and at the same time adding tension to the nervous system. and 
To ease off this tension, the therapist also instructs the patient to bend the ipsilateral knee joint. So again, there are a lot of variations by which we can perform this exercise. The exercise can be performed as a slider in which as soon as the patient starts performing the contralateral side flexion, the patient also bends the knee, easing of tension here and adding tension here, thereby facilitating the cephalid sliding of the nervous system. And then as the patient goes into ipsilateral side flexion, patient extends the ipsilateral knee. So the exercise is going to look like this. Very nice. And if we want to just add the tensioner exercise, then the simple way the patient is going to just perform the contralateral side flexion. Hold it for two seconds and return back. So please do remember that there are a lot of variations by which the nervous system mobilization exercises can be prescribed to patients. And these five are the common prescriptions that a physiotherapist can follow while treating the cervicogenic headache individuals. I sincerely hope that the information shared in this video is going to be helpful for you all. Do keep motivating us with your comments and feedback. Do keep sharing physio classroom videos with your contacts. See you all in our our next video till then keep learning keep sharing and stay connected